the debates on the climate crisis in this House take a familiar course. Almost every speaker accepts the need for urgent action, and almost every speaker talks about a just transition. But the truth is that the term just transition means nothing in this country anymore. It's supposed to mean that decisions are made in consultation with those who will be impacted and the measures are deployed to address those and to provide alternatives in terms of goods, services, incomes or jobs that are lost due to climate action measures. The concept of just transition is important because it recognises that we need public acceptance for and ownership of the measures that are adopted. But as I say, the concept is meaningless in Ireland today. It was interesting to listen to government representatives um, during the motion debate this week that sought a moratorium on the development of data centres. It was too, to- too soon, government told us. Further analysis is required, they said. The contrast of language used by government when discussing matters that affect multinational corporations as opposed to those which impact on ordinary workers, families, farmers and communities um, was stark and exposes the hypocrisy and tokenism at the heart of this government's approach to climate action. During the debate, this debate, I listened earlier to a Green Party TD talk of how we need to make it more difficult for people to own cars or live in the countryside or for farmers to expose, uh, export food. That same TD last night voted against a motion that would limit the development of data centres, despite the strain that they are putting on our electricity network and the impact they are having on our emissions. It is those type of contradictions that have led to the absolute disdain in which the Green Party are held across rural communities. The failure to implement measures that affect corporates without analysing the impact to debt should be compared with the speed in which government will take actions that cost workers, families and farmers. And the best example, of course, is the carbon tax. Implement to incentivise people to use public transport that doesn't exist in most of our constituencies, to encourage farm contractors to switch to electronic vehicles that don't exist, to force low-income families to sit in their homes cold so that deputies can sit in their warm offices pretending that they're taking action. The carbon tax is a penalty on people who happen to live in the places and engage in the work that government don't comprehend. Workers, families, far, um, farmers are listening to the fact that their electricity bills are increasing yet again. And what's the government's response? They're going to increase the carbon tax yet again. It is as if government is intent on driving people against climate actions. I want to talk about our family farmers because they're facing a crisis. Today's Farmers Journal declares on its front page, weanling prices hit a five-year high. Another way to describe that same information would be farmers receive the same prices for their produce today as they did five years ago, despite significant increases in input costs and obligations. And we know that Irish farmers can play a positive role in climate action, but every single thing that this government does appears to be aimed at actually preventing them from doing so. The only measures that have been um, aimed at um, production reduction has been actually aimed at our most sustainable beef producers, our um, our suckler farmers, rather than um, factory-controlled feedlots. Um, Those farmers who want to enter organics meet obstacles and obstructions every step of the way. The forestry policy of this government is actually driving farmers away from the sector rather than enticing them. Um, And the Greens are suggesting that we eat less meat, while for farmers who switched from beef to horticulture, such as mushroom, they are rewarded by watching the scenes of shipments arriving in Ireland containing 4,000 tonnes of peat after travelling a 3,000 kilometre journey by sea, where a further 200 trucks meet the ship to unload the peat that could be sourced here in a much more environmentally sustainable manner. That's the incompetency, the hypocrisy and the tokenism that underpins this government's approach to agriculture and the environment. It will result in less farmers, yes. It will result in poorer farmers, absolutely. It will drive people out of rural communities, without doubt. But it will deliver precisely nothing for the environment. So how about adopting an approach that will work? Starting by not taxing people more for things for which there is no alternative. By delivering an ambitious vision for Irish agriculture, which supports and encourages entry into organics. By delivering a forestry policy that is good for the environment, good for communities and good for the economy. By t- tackling the factory control, control feedlots rather than our suckler farmers. That rather than allowing the importation of peat from Latvia, wood from Scotland, beef from Brazil and milk from New Zealand, we add value to those sectors that actually deliver climate action here in Ireland. For now, 
If the government continue their current trajectory, they should not and cannot insult us by using the term just transition because they are doing nothing to deliver it.